Good evening, everyone. Welcome to today's academy session in collaboration with MathWorks and IIT Delhi Motorsports. Our speakers for today are Aditya Sharma, Chaitanya Raghav, Shashank Mandakunali, and uh, Shre Shreyam Bansal, representing the I IIT Delhi Motorsport team, along with Alak Shindra from MathWorks. Together, they will be delivering a presentation on Formula Student BMS and Motor Cooling System Design. The speakers will delve into the following topics. Motor cooling system and BMS, project introduction and motivation, methodology and live demo session and discussion, key takeaways, some updates uh, from MathWorks on battery and BMS, resources, and uh, followed by a QA session. So, without further ado, uh, let's begin with the session. Over to you, Veer. Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, this is Veer Alakshin from MathWorks, and along with me, I have Chaitanya, Aditya, Shashank, Shreyam, and Parth. So they are from the IIT Roorkee Motorsports. And today we'll be uh, covering uh, the content on Formula Student BMS and motor cooling system design. Now, to just give an overview, so we have got a lot of requests that if someone wants to get started uh, with uh, uh, BMS and motor cooling system using MATLAB and Simlink. How do we go around that? So we we have been working with uh, IIT Mo uh, Roorkee Motorsports. Uh, I mean, since uh, two three years closely. So we realized that they, they have built some content that can be useful for the community to get started with uh, MATLAB and Simlink. They are looking into development of uh, basic starting of BMS and motor cooling system. So we thought, okay, well, let's uh, go ahead and uh, thanks to Formula Bharat for giving us the platform so that we can share. Uh, this uh, content with the community. So before we uh, get started, uh, there were, I mean, I'll just go through the agenda that we have. So this is what uh, we are going to uh, cover today. So I'll talk about modeling approaches. Reason being that uh, there are multiple tools, multiple approaches. So you might get confused, like, okay, uh, uh, what are we using? And what are those things, whether it is equation-based, physics-based, data-based, so different approaches. So I'll just give an overview of it. And then uh, uh, Shriam will uh, go through the team introduction. And uh, then uh, we'll have technical content delivery from Shashank and Shriam on motor cooling system. And then Chetanya and Aditya will talk about PMS. And then uh, I'll be also covering some of the updates from uh, MathWorks, like what in the recent few releases that how we are uh, developing uh, different tools for battery pack uh, design and BMS solution. And then I'll also talk about some getting started materials for automotive student teams on Simscape. And uh, then I'll also talk about some, uh, uh, I mean, one new comp, not new, I would say, last year also we did it, but it, I mean, I would say it's the second year for us uh, uh, doing this MathWorks modeling award at Formula Bar 2024, and then we are open for questions. So with this, uh, uh, let's uh, dive into the topic. So uh, whether it is your uh, vehicle, robots, or any aerospace system, so there are basically two approaches that we go around for modeling. So one is the first principle, and another one is a data-driven. Now, when we talk about first principle, it base, it means physics base. So it can be performed using programming, log diagram, modeling uh, languages, modeling methods. So what is the purpose? The so purpose is basically to explore design or physical parameters. For example, uh, if you take a mechanical system over here, like this is uh, one uh, uh, spring mass tamper system. Now, if you have to, uh, based on physics, if you want to uh, write a program or kind of make a block diagram representation of it. What you need is you need the equation of motion. So what will you do is like you will write certain equations which will define the behavior of this uh, mechanical system. And then you will try to either you can code it or you can present in a form of a block diagram. Okay, so what are the requirements? The requirements as we mentioned that first principle is based on physics. So physics of the system should be known. So that's the first requirement. And another requirement is that system level equations can be derived and implemented. So if you have the equations, you can, uh, from some research papers on some, so some books, so I think you can directly start coding or uh, representing it in a form of a block diagram, or you can uh, just start deriving it and move to the next level for coding it or representing it in a form of a block diagram. Then another popular approach is based on physical network. 
where again the purpose is same and even the requirements uh, requirement one of the requirement is that physics of system should be well known so here what we are doing is we are building a physical system based on the physical network where components are already equipped with the equations that we need now apart i mean the difference between the previous thing is that the in terms of requirement is that component level model should exist like for example here you can see there mass inertia spring and all these things are there if not they can be created okay and then the next approach is the data driven which is becoming uh, a lot popular nowadays because of different methods like uh, deep learning machine learning statistical method system identification so in this what we do is that uh, this is completely based on the data that you have if you have some kind of sensor data you can use for example system identification and you can represent it i mean get it a uh, transfer function or you can say state space model so just uh, going quickly around the purpose so purpose is for modeling an existing design and here the first requirement is that we should have a measured data okay. another approach could be based on parameter tuning that if you want to find certain kind of uh, design parameters based on certain requirements so again this is data uh, driven approach in that case the requirement is that you should have a measured data along with you in any case the whole uh, goal is to model it can be your uh, battery it can be a motor it can be a whole vehicle model okay so there are different tools uh, that we have uh, for programming we have tool we have uh, for block diagram we have simulink we have for physical network simscape is there so what we are going to do today is like based on your approach you can pick or the use case you can pick any of these uh, approaches and any of these tools but today what we are going to cover is that we are basically going to focus on this part the first principle so the model that uh, uh, iit rookie uh, team is going to show that will be you will see that uh, at some places they have derived the equations and they have built the model at some places they have used the physical network approach so even though they are like uh, in the like, uh, wide spread a first principle and data driven uh, but they can all be used together it's not that if you're using first principle you can't use data driven no you can use together like one example what uh, it rookie team is going to show you will see that uh, th there's a model where, which is involved in simulink uh, a block diagram it is also involving simscape uh, uh, models okay but at the same time if you want to uh, include data driven modeling or for example if you want to do some kind of uh, deep learning data that also can be included in the platform okay so with this uh, going ahead uh, i'll hand it over to iit rurki motorsport so they will get started with the content with the introduction and then going through the content they want to share so over to you uh, team yeah i'll stop sharing all right so good evening everyone uh, at first let me introduce introduce you with all the speakers uh, we have uh, aditya sharma the electrical head and uh, accumulator head from uh, uh, session 22 23 we have chaitanya raghav the electrical and accumulator head from session 23 to 24 then we have uh, shashank the from aerodynamics and thermal management subsystem and uh, we have parth the vehicle dynamics head from for session 23 to 24 and i am shriram bansal the deputy team leader and the uh, aerodynamics and thermal management head from session 22 to 23 so next slide please so first let me introduce you with the team uh, we are a multi uh, disciplinary student team involved in designing fabrication and testing of formula style race vehicle uh, we have developed a race uh, we have manufactured a vehicle recently called rmsc 23 uh, and we have taken it to different uh, competitions for uh, like formula bharat virtuals formula bharat 23 and recently we went to formula student uh, uk where we came Uh, where we were in top 3 in all the asian team and we also were recognized as uh, one of the best uh, cost report uh, presented to the judges next slide okay, so these are some of the specifications of our rmsc 23 uh, as you can see here the acceleration top speed and the weight of the vehicle uh, our weight was 240 kgs and uh, in the next design we are targeting it to be 220 kgs uh, measured next slide 
Okay, so now without wasting more time, let me tell you about our motor controlling model. Uh, so, next slide. Okay, so at first, let me introduce you with the team goals. Mainly, there are three uh, goals that we focus on reliability, manufacturability, and competitiveness. Competitiveness. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we try to manufacture. We try to design our a system which is easily manufacturable, have least weight, and costs us very less. Uh, we also design our world which is competitive in nature by reducing weight and cost. And uh, we try to do reliable modeling and uh, testing of our model. So, talking about our design. Uh, we have used simulating tools uh, and try to take uh, realistic assumptions to model our vehicle uh, cooling system. We have tried to reduce as much weight as possible, and which has resulted in a reduction of 40, 57 percent in cost in, by introducing a single radiator system. In our design, we have a radiator uh, along with a fan, a pump, and catch can, which are cooling motor and motor controller unit. Next slide. Okay, so first let me talk uh, let me tell you why do we need uh, thermal management so it, considering our case we have calculated the average uh, power loss average heat loss due to our motor and motor controller which came out to be approximately 2 kilowatt uh, we calculated it using our motor and motor controller efficiency curves given us to by the vendors uh, as we can see here there are at different times there are different peaks in the uh, motor loss and motor controller loss, which result in uh, reducing efficiency. Next slide. So what will happen if uh, we do not cool our system? This graph uh, on the right shows if we are not using a good cooling system, the temperatures of the motor and motor controller will rise exponentially. This could harm our motor. Go, this could harm our motor and motor controller. Uh, they can, there could be a cause of fire, the exponential decrease in efficiency, and even expo, uh, like uh, there could be any damages to the uh, our devices also. So, taking the constraints in mind, uh, like uh, for motor, we need a temperature less than 50 degrees, and for our, our flow rate should be more than 8 liter per minute, and for a motor controller, a temperature should be less than uh, 60 degrees and our flow rate should be less than 12 liter per minute. Taking this in mind, we have designed a complete mode uh, cooling system. So this is the architecture of our cooling system. Uh, at first, uh, using the powertrain sizing model and uh, taking a endurance event of formula student uh, competitions in mind, we have calculated the motor loss and motor controller loss. Uh, the, with the help of those laws, we have calculated the coolant temperature uh, from the outlet of motor and motor controller unit, uh, sending them to the radiator, uh, taking the outlet from the radiator and sending back it to the motor and motor controller. We have taken uh, the characteristic curve of fan, the characteristic curve of pump, and we calculated the flow rate for both. And considering these, we have calculated the temperatures of uh, coolant in our system. We have used an uh, NQ effectiveness model to uh, calculate the heat transfer coefficient for our radiator. So these are the assumptions that we have taken into mind. Uh, we have taken no heat transfer due to convection to the atmosphere, or we have neglected the radiator radiation. Uh, we have also taken that all the heat generated by motor motor controller is trans getting transmitted to the uh, coolant. Next slide. So these are the results uh, that we uh, that were calculated using the Simulink model. Uh, as we can see here, both the uh, the coolant temperature for both uh, motor and motor controller came out to be less than uh, 50 degrees, which were in the uh, optimal range of. Uh, okay, so at first there are two different types of uh, types of uh, method from which we can use to calculate our. Uh, heat transfer coefficient. At first, it was LMTD method and NTU effectiveness method. So let me tell you why have we haven't used LMTD method. It's quite simple because the input and output temperatures for coolant and uh, air means there are diff four different times, types of temperatures that we should know before calculating the uh, heat transfer with the help of LMTD method, which was not, which was not possible in our case. So we used NTU effectiveness model because it, for this, we just need the flow rates. Uh, it was quite complex, but uh, 
still we cannot can use LMTD. Uh, as I told you, we have used a single radiator model uh, instead of using a two radiator model. It was quite because we have used this decision matrix to decide whether we should go with single radiator or two radiators. And in this, we can see taking uh, cooling uh, power, weight, and cost into consideration that. Uh, Next slide, please. So, so uh, in this slide, uh, uh, here are some of the equations uh, for our NTU effectiveness model. We have used uh, Mills relation for laminar flow using uh, for calculating the Nusselt number, and uh, the effectiveness equation is also given here. The different types of input uh, that we have taken in in our metal metal simulating model are Shashank. So for input, uh, we have taken uh, heat generation calculated using the uh, power si power train sizing model. We have taken the radiator dimensions, uh, the air flow rate, pump flow rate, and velocity of the vehicle, and from these all we have calculated the coolant uh, inlet and outlet temperatures at different locations. For example, before uh, motor and after the motor controller. Next slide. So for calculating the air flow around our radiator and fan, uh, as we know, the radiator is means our, in our design, the radiator is presented in the side part. So we have used uh, uh, the Bernoulli's equations and continuity, continuity equation to calculate the velocity in front of the radiator. Uh, as we can see here, there are five different uh, locations at which we, we need to calculate the velocity. Uh, so taking the characteristic curve of the fan into consideration and calculating uh, the flow rate, uh, our flow rate inside the side pod, we have uh, calculated the flow rate around the radiator. The input that includes our uh, velocity of the car, radiator flow rate, air flow area, the characteristic curve of fan behind the radiator and the output was the air flow rate uh, into the radiator. So this is the equation that we derived uh, using the Bernoulli equation. Uh, next slide. Now I like, uh, so pressure drop, I like to uh, discuss about the pressure drop as uh, we can, as we know there, uh, as the, as there is a sudden bend in the pipe or a sudden uh, change in the cross section area of the pipe, there is a pressure loss, which affect the uh, which affect the flow rate of the pump. So for cal for calculating the flow rate uh, required flow rate for a pump, we we have taken a uh, uh, Darcy friction coefficient into consideration for calculating pressure drop in the coolant lines. Uh, and uh, as you can see in the symmetric of uh, radiator, as the coolant uh, enters the radiator, there is a sudden uh, ninety degree change. Uh, from uh, coolant from a radiator, of radiator tubes to the tube uh, in which the coolant is flowing. And uh, as it is coming outlet, there is a sudden change in cross section from ra radiator to pipe. Taking all this into consideration, we have calculated the pressure drop, which is later used in calculating the flow rate for pump. Yeah, so input parameters again, the flow rate and the cross section area of the coolant characteristics of coolant and pressure drop uh, coefficients and uh, the output was total head loss of the coolant in one loop. I'll only moving on forward with the simulating model. So as we can see here, the different uh, blocks for our sim in our simulating model, uh, the first block here represent the motor and motor controller loss. Uh, the second block is for the pump. Uh, we have a heat balance for motor and motor controller unit. And they, uh, the block for NTU effectiveness model. In the radiator model also, we have calculated the heat transfer coefficient for from the radiator. So we have used different uh, simulating blocks to calculate our uh, uh, in the sim to calculate our results. At first, uh, that we have introduced is a that we have used is a, our delay function. Uh, as we know, as the coolant is flowing uh, inside the inside of the coolant, it is not the case that the coolant is uh, uh, within milliseconds is going from one place to another. That's why we use this delay function so that uh, 
we can we can consider that a control volume of a fluid is going in the amount uh, in the time it takes from one place to another there are two uh, at two locations we have used the delay function before the motor and uh, after it's going out after it's going out of the motor 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 controller we have also used the memory function uh, to initiate the environmental conditions uh, for example if we are uh, taking into consideration the track for coimbatore we have taken uh, the temperature to be 30 degrees uh, and uh, uh, and then the temperature is uh, uh, changed as the complete iterations goes on next slide so these are the results of our temperature and uh, from temperature of motor and motor controller unit as we can see that uh, approx at 330 to 331 degrees celsius are uh, this is the maximum temperature for sorry kelvin this is the maximum temperature for a motor and for a motor controller it's less than 320 kelvin so as we can see here uh, shishank could you run the flow rate uh, curve here at first Okay, so as you can see here, the flow rate that is calculated using the uh, pressure head loss, well, if we have taken at a 7.5, the pressure head loss that we calculated using MATLAB was 60.41 feet. And uh, can you show us the graph? So these are the different uh, uh, outputs that we have taken from our model. These are the temperature model at the inlet of uh, motor. As I in the slide, that was the outlet of the motor motor controller unit. Here, as we can see, for motor controller, uh, the, at the inlet uh, it is coming at uh, 228 degree, which would be the outlet for our uh, motor. And for the inlet of our motor, it is coming uh, less than 220 degrees. And these both were the constraint for our uh, uh, motor and motor controller that we have satisfied easily. We have the MATLAB. This is our MATLAB code that we used. In this, uh, can you go at the top, Sushant? All right, so the core here represents our uh, radiator. We have taken the radiator uh, dimensions here, then the fan dimensions. C0 and C1, uh, the characteristic curve was con uh, converted into a, in, was linearly interpolated and the slope and Y intercept was taken as C0 and C1. Uh, the area of the fan, then we have fins, these are of the uh, radiator, the tubes of the radiator, and then the coolant properties of the radiator. Everything is mentioned here. The cool, the air properties are also given. And then we have calculated the uh, surface area of our complete radiator uh, from where the air will be passing. Okay. Right. So I guess Chaitanya uh, would you like to uh, Aditya would you like to continue with the PMS model? Yeah, Chaitanya will present. Chaitanya, can you present your screen? Yeah. Is it visible now? Yeah, it's visible. So hello everyone, I'm Aditya Sharma and I'll be presenting to you our battery management system and its model that we have developed using MATLAB and Simulink. Next, yeah. So firstly, let's look at why do we need a battery management system? Broadly speaking, it helps prolong the life of battery cells, helps protect cells from damage. More specifically, it monitors the voltages, temperatures, and currents in the battery pack for each cells and ensures safe and optimal use of the cells. And in case of unsafe operation, it shuts down the car by sending a fault signal to ECU. Uh, from formula student perspective, battery management system plays a very crucial role in ensuring driver safety. And it is also mandatory for the teams to comply with the BMS rules set by the competition. It also helps estimate the amount of charge left, which is an important parameter visible to the driver during the endurance event. Next. 
so we at uh, yeah so we at iit roorkee motorsports have designed the battery management system in house this was done to achieve our goals of achieving a reliable and cost effective design along with giving us the freedom and the flexibility to change the shape uh, and size of pcb and number of cells per segment uh, because each year we develop uh, a different type of accumulator next slide uh, as we can see here one of our bms pcbs is mounted on a segment of 16 modules each with six cells the exploded view of uh, the cell shows how temperature sensors are mounted in a module and on the right we have uh, a pcb which measures the current and has a microcontroller which communicates with the master bms for acquiring voltage and temperature data deciding when to turn on off a balancing circuit and most crucial of all it detects the fault and further gives it to the ecu uh, so looking at the bms system architecture we can see that each uh, pcb measures the temperature uh, Uh, and the voltages of a segment reporting it to a microcontroller through uart it also generates faults which directly controls the accumulator isolation relay which shuts down the car in case of any fault the data is stored in a data acquisition system for analysis at a later stage and we also send this via telemetry to the pit crew now i would like to hand over the presentation to chetanya who will be presenting the simulink models and results hello everyone uh Uh, my name is chadanya and uh, i will be presenting the bms model that we have developed in matlab and simulink so before diving into the model let me tell you a bit about the motivation behind developing this model so the in house bms that we have developed uses passive balancing which is simply done by wasting the power of the cells with higher soc in a resistance this model helps us to achieve two things Firstly, it gives us the ability to test different balancing algorithms, its effects on cells, and its behavior for different uh, starting SOCs. And secondly, we are also able to estimate the total power that is being wasted in balancing. So now, looking at the top level model, we can see three major components. Firstly, the motor and motor controller model. This model is implemented using a lookup table of the current profile generated using our drive cycle model. uh the dry cycle model is taken from the endurance uh, event secondly the bms logic block which is implemented in state flow and this is where we can test different fault generation and balancing algorithms and at the last we have our battery pack it contains the cells and the balancing circuits so looking inside the bms ic logic block we have uh, the following state machine implemented in state flow upon entry we first check for faults in case of a fault the ic goes into the shutdown state else else it starts balancing uh, we have used voltage based balancing technique and once balancing is complete we again check for faults and this is repeated indefinitely we can implement a number of we can implement num uh, any number of algorithms here and test their performance without risking damage to ourselves we have used uh, so now coming to the battery pack model we have used a scaled down version of our accumulator for this simulation uh, we use a 128s 6p configuration in our car but the simulation is done for 16s 1p configuration and we have scaled the cell parameters accordingly and uh, coming to the one of the most crucial parts the balancing circuit the main current path starts from the positive one uh, port and then uh, the balancing mosfet the bal balancing resistance and the current goes out the minus uh, two port the port m16 basically uh, is used to assert the mosfet signal when the balancing needs to be uh, when the balancing needs to be done we have also probed the voltages and currents to uh, of the resistance to calculate our wasted energy and power so looking at the circuit uh, the next question that comes to our mind how do we select the balancing resistance and the mosfet the two major considerations that we need to take in this uh, take in this uh, are the time taken for balancing and the amount of power that is being generated in the form of heat since the balancing is operating uh, since the battery is operating largely during the flat curve uh, during the flat curve region we can safely assume the voltage to be constant 
so the resistance uh, selection boils down to how much current pcb track and balancing mosfet can handle and how fast can we achieve it taking a resistance footprint of 2512 we have the power dissipation capacity of 1 watt and the nominal voltage of cells being around uh, 3.7 volts we get a value of resistance of around 13.69 ohms uh if we assume that the balancing time for each iteration is around a second uh, that is we are asserting the balance signal for 1 second then we will be able to remove uh, 0.25 coulombs of extra charge from the overcharge cells we also need to keep in mind that the high current part should uh, have appropriate trace width and support the high current and the mosfet should also be selected with the current rating in mind and here we can see the high current path has a, a greater uh, you know, track width so now coming uh, to the graphs uh, some of the graphs from our simulation so firstly we can see uh, the drive cycle uh, graph which is basically the profile of the current which is being drawn from a accumulator and the second graph shows us the cell voltages the cell voltages at the starting of the cycle can be seen that uh, they have a bit of a divergence uh, but due to the balancing they uh, converge and are almost equal uh, throughout the cycle uh, at last we can see the graph of the total uh, energy that is being wasted versus time we can find the total energy wasted to be 224 joules for this particular algorithm uh, in the simulation for perspective a sing single segment holds around 4.5 megajoules of energy and we have eight of those uh, so this justifies the use of passive balancing over active balancing as it adds cost of manufacturing and uh, adds design complexity uh, which are not worth for just saving 400 to 500 joules of energy So now uh, let us look at a live demo of a uh, of the simulation. uh so firstly we can look at the different uh, energy profiles of each cell so this graph basically will show uh, the amount of energy being wasted in each of the cells uh so we can see here that the uh odd numbered cells are having some uh, 50 uh, plus watts of energy being uh, 50 plus joules of energy being wasted and the even number cells have almost null energy being wasted uh this is uh, due to the uh, way we have uh, configured the socs of the cells initially as we can see uh, the socs of the even numbered uh, cells is basically lesser so they will not get balanced uh now coming to the graphs for the cell voltages i think this might have gone to a different screen i you use it <laughs> okay it's opening fine okay yeah uh so we can see all the cell voltages here and i can just show them uh, on a single plot to just uh see how they converge yeah so at the starting there is a bit of divergence but uh, we can eventually see they are uh, all the 16 voltages converge and yeah that's it if you have any questions we are open for questions now Awesome. 
uh, yeah, thanks, Shatanya. So uh, what we can do is, I think uh, uh, I am keeping a watch uh, on the chat if there are any questions. But meanwhile, what I'll do is I will co I mean, start uh, just uh, covering the session, a little small session that I have to cover. And meanwhile, uh, again, we'll come back and we'll see that if there are any questions in the chat. Okay, so yeah, okay. But, but uh, yeah, thanks, Chitanya. Thanks, Shriyam. Thanks, Aditya, Parth, uh, Parth and uh, Shashank. I know there was a technical glitch, but don't worry. Like You definitely control it nicely. We'll come back. Okay, uh, again, we'll come back because if there are any questions, okay, let me just cover the topic that small few concepts that I wanted to share. So I'll share my screen. Oh, one second. Yes, I think that my screen is visible. Yes, we did visible. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so uh, thanks guys. Thanks a lot for covering it. I think uh, giving an overview, of course, boosts the confidence that, okay, how step-by-step step from scratch you can do it. So I was talking about the modeling approaches initially. So what the team presented, the whole cooling system was based on the equations. So they derived the equations and they converted that into uh, a model for the cooling system and where you also saw uh, the temperature, uh, output temperature of the motor and the inlet temperature. And then later, uh, we also saw Aditya and uh, Chaitanya, yeah, Aditya and Chaitanya covering the BMS part where they are like how using uh, understanding of the passive cell balancing, they have uh, converted the theory into a model. And then you can, you, you clear, clearly saw that how it is balancing all the cells. Now, uh, these are the approaches which definitely helps you kind of uh, 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 build your theory, your theoretical concept. So, and at the same time, uh, we are also providing uh, certain toolboxes that can also help you create such kind of simulations. So uh, one is the, uh, the new product that we have uh, launched a few releases back, it's a Simscape battery. Now, the, the, the workflow, the main workflow for Simscape battery is basically on the, uh, on the system level. So it comprises of battery pack design. Uh, then you can also perform thermal management system design, then BMS design. And also if you further, like once you have designed the BMS, the ultimately the target is to deploy the core. So it can also support the deployment and the HIL testing. Now, why do we need? So the reason behind this that we want to build a bridge between the cell and the system model. So uh, how this uh, bridge is developed by providing battery pack design, how you can complete, build a complete battery pack, then uh, uh, you can build electrical and thermal battery pack components. And then once you have the pack uh, with you, the pack system with you, and after that you have developed the electrical and thermal uh, pack components. After that comes the BMS, so you can develop algorithms and other components. And then along with that, uh, one thing which will help you get started is the tutorials and examples. So we're also providing that. And then finally, the HIL and deployment support. Now, uh, just to save time, what I did is I have added one quick three minutes video to introduce the whole uh, concept of Simscape battery. So what we do is like initially, whatever we want, all those thermal management system or BMS, we want the pack. So here, we are building a pack using MATLAB API. We also have a, a support for, I mean, uh, you using app approach, you can do that, but it's the same thing basically that you start with a cell to a parallel assembly, then to module, where in the module, you will see that you have different options for type of modeling, whether you want uh, detail modeling, lump modeling, group modeling, those all things are there. And then finally, you can build a pack out of it, and then you can uh, export a assembling block out of it. Wherein, when you have the block, you will see that it has uh, multiple uh, uh, output and inlet ports. So this is the battery pack that you see. And then over here, you are also seeing that what all you can calculate, you can calculate the, uh, the, the current, the voltage, the state of charge. And slowly, now we are building the whole system. Now, once we have the battery pack with us, so you saw that, okay, we are we are also doing the thermal modeling. So we are providing the ambient thermal uh, environment. Then we have the pack cooling. And then uh, further, we are also adding the blocks. So these blocks, what you see, these are all part of the Simscape uh, uh, battery. So we have multiple options for 
calculating the state of charge. So over, over here, you can see that we have the block for state of charge using the adaptive Kalman filter. And then you can also measure the state of health. Now, once you have done that, you must be wondering that how to build a pack uh, temperature regulation. Again, for this, we have a, a battery coolant control block that can be used. Then further, uh, after having all these different subsystems, the next thing is the cell balancing. So one option is how the team did. They have completely built from scratch. And this is really appreciable because that helps you understand the code itself. But if, in case if you, are, if you want to go ahead with the existing block, that also you can do. So that was a passive balancing. And finally, if you are interested uh, for the battery CCCV that is charged, it is charged, you can also use this and complete the whole battery system. So this is how you can see that how we have uh, uh, this is the gap between the cell and the battery system design. And then these are the results. You can see the estimated SOC. So the balancing is based on the SOC. So you can see that finally it is converging. And then you can also measure the cell temperature of each of the cells and then SOC of each of the cell and even the estimated terminal uh, resistance. Okay. So this was a short intro of what uh, uh, SimSK battery is. Uh, we have multiple resources. I'll put it in the chat itself. But uh, now the question is that if you want to, the whole question is that we started with the cell, like how to parametrize that cell. So the, the common approach is based on equivalent uh, uh, cell model or battery model, which wherein if you have the HPPC test, then which is a, a test based on discharge and charge pulse in which you get the response uh, in terms of voltage. And then finally, what we do is we try to uh, find these parameters like R1, C, uh, uh, C1, EMN, R0, okay. Now, for this, what we have done is, uh, in the last release, uh, we have added one example. Okay, the example name is characterized battery cell for electric vehicle, which is using the parameter estimation. So what this example is doing is, this example is, this is how the, what the code is. So this example is basically taking the uh, cell data, uh, which is based on the HPPC test, that is the hybrid pulse power characterization test, and then we are doing the parameter estimation and this all code is over here, this is available on based on the parameter estimation. What we are doing is we are trying to converge the test data and the simulated data. And from there, we are trying to find out the parameters that we want. Like for example, once we run the simulation, this is what you get. So this all R0 versus temperature, then R0 versus temperature. And even in the form of SOC, you can plot all these plots. So in that case, what would happen, you will parameterize yourself and you will get all the cell parameters and this cell, cell parameters you can feed in the battery pack that you have designed. Okay, now this was one update and another update is that we have also come up with uh, a GitHub uh, repository called Simscape Essentials for Automotive Student Teams. Okay, so this is basically a uh, getting started repository for you if you want to get started with the physical modeling approach. So I'll quickly show the quick model. So this is comprising of three models. One is the simple longitudinal motion model. Then third one is the powertrain uh, model. And the last one is the motor cooling system. So this is how the model looks like. Okay, so once you run this, so uh, you will see the we are uh, sort of uh, seeing, tracking how the performance of the vehicle is, that whether it is able to track the dry cycle or not. And then the interesting things are, you can also measure the SOC and motor temperature. So here, what we are doing is, we are maintaining the motor temperature within like uh, 35 to 45, because, and again, there are certain limitations in this model because we are not having all the parameters, but I think as a starting point, you can get like uh, a starting point and then you can add your parameters to make it more realistic. Okay, so just to give an overview, so uh, this is how the model looks like. So this is the electric powertrain. And further, since we are talking about cooling system, as you can see that we are actually mimicking the whole, uh, 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 the cooling system uh, diagram that we have. Okay, so this is what we are doing, do, doing. So this is basically conduction and convection, heat transfer, and then we have a pipe system, we have a tank. And from tank, we are sending uh, it to a displacement pump. You can also have a constant uh, flow pump over here. And then we, this is a radiator or heat exchanger. And then we have a fan. So this is all available uh, on GitHub. You can try it and you can try to modify and make more complex. For example, uh, you can also uh, 
if if you want to add some losses you can add losses over here some kind of bending losses through pipe that also you can add so all these things are uh, available in the in the product and even in the github repository you can try this and get started okay so we have provided you the qr code also once you scan you can get the link for it and then the last update that we wanted to give you is that again we are hosting the mathworks uh, formula bath special award that is the mathworks modeling award okay so this is uh, for the formula bar teams uh, to, for the 2024 uh, competition so award details are here that basically we are uh, providing the details on the best use of mathworks tools for the your formula bath project and we are also giving cash prizes with there's a note from and based on the income tax deduction and the submission date is december 3rd and again details are over here i will again put the uh, details in the chat and then uh, just to motivate you uh, these were the teams who got selected uh, for the final round the in the last year in which iit rurki was also there and there you can see other teams pravega veloz racing raftar e formula and then octane racing were also there okay and then just one last information is that uh, uh, I think most of the Formula Bar teams are knowing that we uh, sponsored the license. So if you're not having it, you can use this link and request for the Formula Bar license. Okay, and these are our contact. If you have any queries, you can reach out to racinglounge and mathos.com. We have a Facebook group also if you want to join. And then this is the link where you'll find most of the tutorials and racing launch videos and software offering. And we also have a student launch blog. Okay, so with that, I will uh, just stop the presentation. And I'm going to put this whole link in the chat. Yeah. So let me just put that in the chat also if people are interested. And meanwhile, I will stop sharing and then we can take the questions now. Okay, I'm not able to paste uh, in the chat, but I can. So in the chat, I'm putting uh, in the, if okay, in the chat also, I think, yeah, I can put it in the chat. So if you can post in the chat, that will be helpful for the people, those who have joined and even the, for the later purpose. Okay, so Stop. let's go yeah, to the questions if we have any. So let me just, uh... okay. So there's a question from Akshat. Uh, so this is the question to the team. They're asking that, uh, how did you guys simulate your drive cycle? Yeah, so hello, am I audible? Yeah, you're audible, yes. So like, I'd like to answer the question. Uh, we have used the lab time simulator to simulate our drive cycles, uh, available online and we have also self-made, uh, self-developed. Okay. So basically, you, you have written some code. Is it, uh, 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 Shrim, like uh, sort of find, uh, finding out the drive cycle, is it, for certain laps? Uh, yes. Uh, so with the details okay. would be provided by the powertrain team. But yes, okay. we have okay, made fine. the simulating MATLAB model. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, and then one more question is uh, that uh, this form, Anna, and, I, and he's asking, did you guys compute the friction factor under laminar condition or turbulent condition? If so, for the latter, how did you find the surface roughness or did you experimentally find the roughness? So uh, I think uh, he's asking about the Dashi friction factor maybe, I mean, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, if, if you want to take the question. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, Shashank, uh, finally, yeah. We're waiting for you. Go ahead, please. <laughs> uh, so the laminar assumption for the Mills relation was for the coolant through the pipes. Uh, but the Darcy friction for coefficient was calculated for the tur turbulent assumption when it gets into the radiator. And the surface roughness values were calculated from online uh, resources. Uh, we didn't try anything experimental. Okay, okay, yeah, that helps. Okay, thanks. And then there was, and then, okay, there's a follow-up question from Anay. Okay, so uh, 
I mean, uh, you mentioned that the, I think Nusselt number was calculated using Mills relation for laminar flow or your pressure loss calculation as a factor for, okay. Okay, I think we can do one thing uh, since we are running short on time and we are, have a hard stop at six. We can do, uh, guys, uh, you can do one thing. You can have a look into the chat and you can also answer to Anya directly in the chat. Okay, that may help Anya. Okay, and then uh, there was also a question that, uh, like, uh, thanks for the presentation and wonder how widely used MATLAB and Simlink in uh, Simscape in automotive industry. So, yeah, so uh, so it is widely used. And uh, I think what I'll do is, I don't want to call the name like which industries, but uh, I am sending out a link where we have all the uh, customer stories, how it's being used in the uh, industry. And even we have recorded session from the industry expert on a on a in a MATLAB Expo and Mac, so you can also have a look into that. But but thanks, thanks guys, thanks for the questions. Yeah. Okay. So perfect. Yes. Yeah, and also that if you guys have any questions after watching, you can reach out to uh, me if there are any questions regarding MATLAB and Simulink for the formula student applications. And it is if it is more on the, I mean, questions are more towards uh, 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 the content that the team presented from the formula student perspective, you can definitely reach out to them. I think, I think they, they are everywhere. They're on Instagram and, and, and LinkedIn as well. So, yeah. Okay, so thanks everyone. And uh, once again, uh, thanks to Chaitanya, Shriyam, Aditya, uh, Parth, and Shashank. And uh, like uh, uh, special thanks to Shriyam. And uh, there was a technical glitch, but still you managed. And yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, thanks a lot for sharing. And uh, Parth helped us a lot for coordinating. And uh, big thanks to Renta and the Formula Path organizers for uh, giving us the opportunity. Thank you so much. Thanks, Veer, uh, and thanks to the entire team of IIT Roofing Motorsports and to our audience who joined us on YouTube. Thank you and have a good evening.